Hello and welcome to this review of Skull Virgin Islands Rum, Skull Gold, uh, or Rich Gold as they say, is um, a Sazerac brand. I bought this one liter bottle at um, International Market for $6.99. Um, I did a video review for it. I deleted that. Uh, it seemed kind of ragged, so I'm going to do a shorter version. Um, but I'm not going to change my feelings about it. Just do a more concise video. Um, it says J.A. Doherty Sons Company Distillers, Owensboro, Kentucky. That's the old Glenmore bottling plant owned by Sazerac today. J.A. Doherty started distilling in Philadelphia in 1849, then became J.A. Doherty's sons after he died. Eventually, the same old story, the family got tired of the company, didn't want to run it, so they um, sold out. Now it's a Sazerac uh, line of brands. There's Skull Rum, Skull Gin, Skull um, Vodka, which is very popular in Louisiana. Oh, Doherty was born in Ireland in 1788, moved to the United States 1814. Okay, uh, well, one, one thing I noticed about this, it has to be British Virgin Islands, right? Because uh, it's imported, so if it was the United States Virgin Islands, it wouldn't be imported, from, you know, being from a U.S. territory. All right, so it's unusually light. A gold rum is usually gold. This is more of a very, very, very pale color, like a champagne with just the slightest hint of gold, so you're thinking probably like me that it's minimally aged and almost certainly not colorized. You know, there's no caramel color added. That would be the thinking with this in my mind. Um, the Skull brand, from what I could find, was started in 18... sorry, 1956. That's when the trademark was uh, acquired. So anyway, it's got the two griffins, the shield, the crown, castle, a wooden barrel, skull, all right, um, the Bacardi Gold was very good. The Castillo Gold tasted like just rubbing alcohol, really. It didn't taste bad, but I, the most I could give it was a C plus. And that was probably being a little generous. Another Bacardi brand. The Aristocrat haven't tried. The, uh, that's another story of family-owned company, so it'd be interesting to talk about that. There's a refrigerator, oh well. Now the aroma is like rubbing alcohol. Go buy a bottle of rubbing alcohol, smell it, it's going to smell like this. But it's deceptive because when you get into the flavor, and the alcohol legs are nice, it's like 50 little indentions around the ring and 50 little fence slats, fence boards. The flavor is interesting because it's sweet, sugary, as you would expect. Although in this case, that wasn't what we got. Then you start to pick up the wood. It's an uncharred, I'm thinking white oak. Very strong wood prominence here. Um, maybe some honey, maybe some candle wax. Yeah, you know, you start searching for descriptors, and none of those are really accurate, but you're trying to make a close approximation. Mm. There's a little spicy character. The body's light to medium. The finish is lingering, really. Kind of hangs around. Uh, with the sugar, the spicy note. Even an onion, like a green onion shallot thing, and it tails off. Um, yeah, for six ninety nine, this is coming across way better than the Castillo Gold. At least initially. Now, when I did the taste challenges, these things change. You've noticed many taste challenges. I can't even tell them apart. I get them confused. I'm not sure. Um, Now, there is a strong 
40% alcohol, alcohol burn with this. Let's not try to obfuscate that. That's there. You're going to get that. But if you think for a minute, there is that background of wood, the sugar, very light sugar, the candle wax, the spice. It's an intriguing product because it's coming across better than you would, like I said earlier, than you would expect. Um, I'm not saying, oh, skull, you got to go out and run out, buy it. You can't wait, don't overlook it. Nothing like that. I'm saying it's there, check it out. Well, maybe it's there and you may not see it. It's around here. We get skull vodka, it's very popular in Louisiana for whatever reason. Now I'm kind of curious to try it. But, um, in the gin. And I have the white rum there. I have these white rums. I haven't ever tried a, a white rum in my life, but I'm curious. Uh, I'll do this aristocrat gold next. That's the last gold rum I have in possession. Then we'll go through the white and pick up some other ones to taste challenge. Um, I'm not showing the Bacardi 10 or 8 year. Those kind of like a different style. The age rums, much higher grade. Alright, um, I'm not even sure if this thing is good per se. Good. Is it good? But I'm, the way that wood is coming across, I mean, it's some pretty strong white oak. And I don't even know if you would like the woodiness. It's such a heavy wood. I feel like, I think I need to go with a B minus, like I say, 82 out of 100, just because of that. Because you think, no, no, it's all booze. It's well, it's a well liquor. It's, there's nothing there. But um, I'm not prepared to say that. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll go with an 82 out of 100 for my, my initial score. Um, now down the line, when I start bringing it up against others, it may deteriorate, it may go better, you know, it may increase, I don't know. But um, at least in my case, I can't say, you know, you should, because with an 82, I'm not going to say, oh yeah, go run again. But, um, glass bottle. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't pass these kind of things up. It's a little bit too intriguing. So, yeah, uh, give a very reluctant, oh yeah, never mind, I'm not going to recommend it, but that's kind of a backhand recommendation. But anyway, uh, it's, it's fascinating and uh, curious. Uh, they don't say too much about it. There's no website, even sizerack.com is not putting out too much information these days, so it's just kind of hanging out there. Anyway, uh, I'm glad I tried it. So, uh, laissez les bon temps relay in a measured sense, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. <laughs>